used to be that children born with developmental disabilities were sent away to live out their days in institution or hidden from society by their families in virtual shame. And it might still be that way today if it weren't for the gall and gumption of one very feisty woman named Ida Rappaport. Hi, I'm Janice Marie for Close Up on America's Business, and we're here today with an inspiring look at an organization called LifeSpire, founded on her belief that with education, advocacy, and services, these people could in fact become highly contributing members of society. And boy, oh boy, was she right. Aspire is an organization that provides services to people with developmental disabilities throughout the five boroughs of New York City and in the metropolitan area. The scope of people with developmental disabilities range from people with mental retardation, autism, neurological impairments, cerebral palsy, and other disabilities that interfere with one's ability to function independently in society. On a daily basis, we serve over 2,500 people. We have another 1,000 who receive clinic services in New York City as well as the Long Island and the Hudson Valley. And hopefully one day we'll be able to expand our services to other, other parts of New York State as well as other states. What types of programs do you offer? The types of programs we offer are uh, residential services, pre-employment and supportive employment services, day treatment services for individuals who uh, need a little bit more support, learning and growth um, to go out into the community. Uh, we also provide uh, services to various, um, uh, various community-based organizations. Uh, we have groups of individuals who go to nursing homes, uh, groups of individuals who uh, go to libraries, who do volunteer work in the, uh, at, at the zoo and at other various community centers. Uh, we also have uh, services for individuals who uh, have a dual diagnosis of mental illness as well as uh, developmental disability. Uh, we have our Article 16 clinic services that provide therapeutic uh, interventions to people as they need them. Talk a little bit more about your vocational program. Our vocational programs are really designed to uh, help individuals learn to function in, in an atmosphere of work where they have, uh, they, they learn responsibility for their, themselves, they have the responsibility to the uh, organization or business that they work for, uh, and our employment services provide that kind of training, but it also provides ongoing support. Many of our individuals function in a work enclave where a group of, uh, a group of our individuals will go to a college, a college cafeteria, and work under the guidance and, uh, of one of our, our dedicated supportive work counselors, who will then look and intervene, knowing when to intervene, to assist them to f function in, in as most independent manner as possible. We have folks that work in, in, in Chili's or McDonald's, and uh, they are able to, uh, they're so proud when they put their uniform on and when they go to work and, and uh, they come home with their paycheck, and not only are they earning money, uh, but they're earning a sense of pride about who they are and what they are capable of doing. You mentioned a residential program. What's involved in that? We have various models in our, our, our residential service options. Uh, we have uh, supervised residential programs that provide people supervision and assistance in their daily living activities. We have, uh, we have a couple of residences. We have some residences that take care of people who also have accompanying physical mobility challenges. Uh, we have people that are, are in wheelchairs or who have serious, serious challenges uh, in, their, in just every activity from dressing and eating. But we also have individuals who have minimal supervision in what we call supportive apartment living. Uh, we also have individuals who are living on their own independently, uh, and those are some of our greatest examples. Uh, our, the found, our founder, Ida Rappaport's son, Michael, lives in one of those uh, facilities. Years ago, when you're born with disability, you, like told the doctors, no, put them in this institution. And, and my mother said, you think I'll have my son in, in my summer for 10 months? You out of your mind? Mother is, you know, it's hard for my mother. You know, that time, you know, I have no Medicare, Medicaid disability. You know, it's hard, very hard for me. And we moved to Pelham Bay, and my mother saw, the, uh, saw a corporation in our apartment with five parents, and is a, um, I can't say the word, um, is, is, is. Oh.
grown and, and still growing. It's been an amazing road. I tell everybody that I, I meet that if their child is handicapped, and generally I meet people that have handicapped children, I tell them there's nothing, nothing better than a residence. Uh, it gives both the child and the parent uh, a, a break. It gives them, you're able to feel secure in the fact that she's well taken care of. Uh, it's made a difference to my wife and I that's absolutely unimaginable. Uh, we have peace of mind. We know she's well taken care of. Uh, it's been a turning point in my life. I don't know what else, what else to say except that Life Spire has been a blessing. The type of individual that we serve ranges from people who if you saw on the street, you wouldn't even guess that they were mentally retarded. You might think they were a little slow to, on the opposite end, people who are extremely behaviorally involved or medically challenged. We need an array of staff to deal with that. Everything from what we call direct care staff who basically come to us with a high school degree. Uh, we train them to, to do this job all the way up to uh, nurses, um, PhD level psychologists, uh, administrators. Uh, and it, it's that gamut of people that we have to attract because the needs, we can't just take an individual and say, okay, we're going to deal with this particular need, so I hire a nurse to deal with this person. There may be other needs. There may be eating needs, so I'm going to need a lot of occupational therapists, physical therapists, speech therapists, uh, LPNs. So we run the gamut from people who don't necessarily have a lot of educational background to people who have published works in, in very prestigious journals. But what they all share is a big heart that makes them want to do this job um, and as I indicated before there are many many people who stay with us for a long time because of the satisfaction they get out of it and one of the things that we also do quite um, well I think at LifeSpire is we promote from within so one of the things that I also tell our new trainees is that virtually everybody they're going to see in a supervisory position started off doing what they're doing we are not asking them to do things that we haven't done, including myself or some of the other top people that you may be filming. It's pretty well known that people in this business don't always get to make a lot of money. So why do it? The reason I do this is I, I believe that my life is enriched by helping the lives of others. And that goes both for the consumers as well as the staff. I take my responsibility to both very, very seriously. I get tremendous satisfaction out of seeing clients move and progress and do things that they never thought they were able to do. And i got to tell you, as, as a manager, I also love seeing that same thing happen in staff. That staff who did not feel that they could do certain things, lo and behold, five years down the road, I can go back to them and say, you know what, you started off here as a scared kid. Today you're running a, a program that's worth several hundred thousand dollars. That gets me jazzed. Although we have always had an underlying commitment to what we do, the LifeSpire staff, executives, managers, all came together to look at what really are our core values of how we operate every day. And those values were excellence, integrity, growth, innovation, and stewardship. And we really felt that this is what we live, the staff every day, the consumers, the managers, every single person that is involved in life, the LifeSpire family lives and dreams these values. In our family, my family, one of my children uh, had um, uh, some problems. We don't know where that's going to take us, but it made me acutely aware of uh, the problems confronting us today. And LifeSpire is meeting that challenge. We, we're developing school programs, after school programs, more residential programs. Uh, and we're poised to, to deal with those uh, problems that many, many uh, of our political leaders and, uh, and our community leaders are still coming to grips with. So I have to say that LifeSpire has become a leader. Um, and that's what we were 55 years ago, and that's what we are today. Having the opportunity to make a difference in someone's life, people's lives, as well as our employees, is essential to HR's functioning. And People who are looking for a rewarding position can come here to LifeSpire without any prior experience and be given the opportunity to work with our program participants 
as well as be offered many different training opportunities. Helping people is my motivation, okay? Um, I've been able to fulfill my own personal destiny by being able to help and to serve um, people here at LifeSpire, and I believe that's what I've been put here to do. Well, thank goodness for feisty people like Ida Rappaport, who saw that great things can come out of anyone. And thank goodness for LifeSpire, who does what they can to bring that to reality. Reporting from Manhattan for Close Up on America's Business, I'm Janice Marie.